Hey, this is Ian from the Web Designers Academy. In this video, I'm going to show you all the cool new stuff in WP Triggers. So when you install WP Triggers, you're going to have a new menu entry in your WordPress dashboard that says WP Triggers and it has a few options. Where you're going to want to go to first is New Trigger. So click on New Trigger. This will bring up the Add New Trigger Box screen and you're going to want to give it a name. Since this is just a demo, let's just call this Trigger Box a demo. And here's the first trigger set. So what you put on this side of the trigger set are the actual triggers. And what you put on this side of the trigger set is the action that you want to have happen. Let's create a simple zip code search. So for example, on the left here, we're going to put the zip codes that we want people to search for. So let's just start making up some one, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Let's just stop there, but you can keep adding as many as you want one per line. And then on the right, you can tell WP Triggers what you want to display once someone types in either of these triggers. Now, we can actually do a few other things, but let's just do something simple first. So let's just say, yes, we deliver to your area. Okay, this is about as simple as you can get with WP Triggers. And then let's go down here. Now, actually, what we can do is, since we're here, we can actually add an entirely new trigger set. And let's say that if someone types in five, six, four, three, you could say, yes, we deliver, but only on the weekends. Now you can put HTML in these boxes, so you can include images and YouTube videos and Vimeo videos and, and just text and bold and heading and all that stuff. But let's just leave it for now. Now there are a few other options here. And let's say someone doesn't type in either of those triggers up top. What should the trigger box then say? Well, this is where you put that information. So let's say, since we're talking about a delivery place here, um, if someone types in a zip code that is not one of the triggers, we probably want to say something like, uh, sorry, we do not currently deliver to your area. Now, once again, we could um, redirect a visitor or use a short code. Let's skip that for now. And so here's some of the new stuff. And some of the new stuff is a placeholder text. So now you can include some text within the box that'll disappear as soon as someone uh, starts typing. So for example, let's do something like enter your zip code. And here are a few other options. Now, since we're talking about United States zip code, those are all numbers. So I can check the box that says only allow numbers to be entered into the trigger box. Depending on the use, I might want to hide this trigger box after someone searches. Currently, I don't. And this is useful if you're using short codes within trigger boxes, but placing those trigger boxes at the bottom of the page, um, it'll automatically scroll down. And we can toggle a little shake just to draw a little bit of attention to it. Let's leave trigger box styling and button options alone and then just click save changes. Now, once saved, you're going to have a message at the top uh, that lets you know that it's been created And here is a piece of short code that you want to copy. So I'm just going to select it, right click and choose copy. And you can paste this on any page or post. So I actually have a page right here to show how this all works. And I'm just going to paste this in like that. And I'm going to click update. And with that updated, now I'm going to go to the front side, which is the front end of this page and reload the page. And it says, and there's our placeholder text. Oh, do you see the wiggle? And so enter your zip code. So let's say one, two, three, four, five, and then hit enter. And I'll say, yes, we delivered to your area. But if we type something like seven, a bunch of sevens and eights, it'll say, sorry, we do not currently deliver to your area. And then there was the other one, which I forgot what it was. Uh, hold on. Uh, 5643. So let's type in 5643. And we'll say yes, but we only deliver on the weekends. And so that's an extremely quick overview of how this works. Let me show you some of the more advanced things. So let's go back to this trigger box. Now, of course, like I quickly mentioned, uh, let's say that when someone types in 5634, we actually wanted to redirect them to another page. You would simply redirect these visitors to this URL and you would just type in a complete URL, uh, maybe something like whatever, eBay.com. But uh, what I want to talk to you about is things down here. So 
we have trigger box styling. So if you look at this trigger box right here, this is styled the way that my theme, which is currently Genesis and Dynamic Website Builder, says to make boxes like that, form boxes. That's the styling, which is basically a white background with a little gray uh, outline there. But we can override that. Simply check this box here, and we have a bunch of options. We have text alignment, text color, background color, size. So I'm just gonna make a few decisions here. Now, this is not gonna look pretty, but I just wanna do this to show you. So we can pick a red, and let's pick, uh, I don't know, a blue for that one, and a border. Let's make it green. Now, this is gonna look terrible, I know. And you can change the corner radius, let's say 20 pixels, and the vertical and horizontal padding. But let's leave all that. And you can also activate a button. So I'm gonna check this box. And you have a few options here. You can choose the button layout, whether you want it underneath it and make it the same width, or underneath it and make it about 60%. You can move the button to the right and make it 75% and 25%, or move it to the right and go 50-50. But I'm just gonna leave it underneath it for now. And here you can choose what the button says. So currently the button says submit. I'm going to do something like, um, let's go. <laughs> And we could actually choose to use an image button. We would just click here and paste in the URL of the image right there. But let's go back to regular button. And we have some styling here. Now, by default, it's green. But let's say we want it this terrible pink color. And once again, we can change the corner radius. But let's make that zero so it'll actually be square. We have uh, vertical padding and horizontal. Like I said, I'm just going to make some really bad decisions here just so that you can see. And so the background of the the button will be this purple. Let's make the text, oh, I don't know, let's make it yellow so it really stands out. And the button size, let's match it what we did up here. What do we do up here? Three. Let me just type three here. And I'm just going to hit Save Changes. So once saved, now you just go back to your trigger box on the front end and reload, and let's take a look at how it looks. And here we can see our terribly designed uh, trigger box and you can tell that remember we made this one rounded we made this one straight and we made this one a purple and yellow and there's the placeholder text enter your zip code so when I click in there and begin typing watch it's gonna make it disappear so I'm gonna type one two three four five and I can either hit the enter button on my keyboard or actually click the button it'll still submit the trigger box either way and then yes we deliver to your area now normally you'd want to style that a bit more which you can using any HTML and so that's the styling of the trigger boxes. Let's go back to the admin area. I'm gonna show you just a few more things. Um, and just real quick. So back on the all trigger screen, here are all the demos that you see on Web Designers Academy. And here's the one that we just made. And so when you move your mouse over any of these, you'll see we have some options. We have edit, which brings you back to the screen we were just on. We have stats, which will take you to the trigger history page. You can see the stats for this particular trigger box. You can delete it. You can export the settings, which will give you a downloadable file that you can keep locally or send over email or post online or whatever. Or you can click the duplicate button. And that's useful if you wanted to try out a few things uh, with your trigger box without having to completely redo it. So for example, I could just click duplicate. And if we look down the bottom, there's now a demo copy. So this is a duplicate of this one. And so let's talk about the trigger history. So on the left, click on trigger history and you'll be able to see all the triggers that have been submitted on all your trigger boxes. And there's some filters here. So here we can, let's say, drop this down and you can choose a previous date or a date range. You can choose just to look at one particular trigger box. And you can choose how many entries per page. And now you can also delete and export. So let's say for whatever reason we didn't want that one, you click delete and click yes. And let's say you wanted to export these as a CSV, you would check that to check them all. And then click Export as CSV, 